Hey everyone, you're about to witness uh, yet another uh, cart crash. Um, I hope the audio was a little better this time. Uh, this Jehovah's Witness gentleman was pretty soft-spoken, um, but hopefully it comes through. Uh, so what I was trying to do on this one, um, I hope you couldn't sense any uh, frustration on my part, was to get to the message of salvation, to find out what kind of their message was to get him to enunciate that. And then from there, uh, try to get into some of the issues related to uh, the new light as it relates to uh, the resurrection of uh, the unrighteous. Because what I intended to do, and we just didn't get there, unfortunately, um, as you'll see, is to talk about, you know, what must I do to be, uh, to be saved? You know, what must I do to be saved? Very, uh, very simple question. And my intention was that when he gave me the answer to that, it's like, okay, um, if I die now, you know, and I didn't believe your particular message about salvation, what happens to me? Um, right. And so the answer would be, well, I get, uh, I get resurrected and then I get another opportunity, uh, during, uh, the thousand years. And then I was going to follow up with that and, and ask about, well, what if I die during the Great Tribulation um, when all of this starts to, to, to run amok? Um, what, what must I, you know, if I, if I don't believe this message, then what happens to me? And then I'd kind of like to get the wheels uh, starting to, uh, to, turn, uh, to turn there. And then uh, what I would uh, want to further discuss is, can I wait until the Great Tribulation starts um, before I, I, I decide to um, become saved as you, as you define it. And then that would start to get the wheels, uh, turning because as most of you know, um, uh, regarding the new light is yes, you can wait until the great tribulation, um, to get another opportunity. Um, because what happens during the great tribulation? Well, um, Babylon the Great, uh, the world empire, false religion comes tumbling down, and who is left standing? None other than the Jehovah's Witnesses. Pretty darn close to proof positive that uh, this is the one true religion if uh, that gets fulfilled, right? And so why wouldn't I want to wait? Um, I have all these doubts right now that this is the true religion, but I could wait until the Great Tribulation, which is happening very, very soon, and then uh, come to um, accept this uh, message. Or I could die at some point, um, as long as it's before Armageddon or before um, the judgment of the sheep and the goats, and then uh, wait till I'm resurrected. And of course, when you get resurrected, uh, again, you have <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses, pretty much the only ones left standing, pretty close to proof positive, right? That this is the one true religion. Sorry to disappoint you, I did not get to any of that. Um, the, the, the conversation, it sounded like he wanted to sort of end it there, and he, he gave me his uh, number and everything. We shared contacts, and I don't know if anything will come uh, come of it. So um, we, we got to talk about the gospel. We got to talk about a little bit about salvation by works. Um, he got to see those scriptures, um, and so that's good. And so um, please pray for this uh, gentleman that um, the scriptures he read— um, I don't, it sounded like it went in one ear and out the other, but just pray for him that those scriptures, uh, will, uh, sink in. And it just, it just didn't go where I wanted it to go. It was re respectful conversation. Um, but, um, his answers were pretty vague. I was really trying to peel off the onion layer, trying to dig in a little bit. It just wasn't happening. Uh, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoy. Oh, okay. Yeah, we actually, it's kind of covered up. We have that oh, okay. Yeah, I saw the whole thing. Yeah. I, saw, I, saw, I saw the God's Kingdom thing. I was like, oh, that looks uh, pretty interesting. Okay. Yeah, you can even scan the QR code. It'll take you to the um, website. Anything you want there? Oh, cool. Okay. Are you familiar with Jehovah's Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I've, um, yeah, I've been to your, uh, your jw.org. Oh, I, like I like to do a lot of research on just uh, different religions. I've definitely... Uh, Checked, uh, checked y'all out, and uh, what you find interesting on it? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk a lot about like God's kingdom, but yeah. um, you know, it seems like y'all have a lot of uh, beliefs that kind of differ oh, uh, from, yeah, yeah, just from the mainstream and what I've right. kind of grown to believe, yeah, and and, uh, yeah. and all that. Uh, yeah, and one of the things I like to kind of uh, 
you know, asked different people, different religions, is, uh, you know, what do you think, uh, what's your gospel message? What do you think the, the, good, the good news is? Well, that's, well, that's well, one thing that we were talking about, like you mentioned, was yeah. God kingdom. So we, we teach and we believe that Jesus Christ is all stars with him. He's God's son. And God's kingdom will overtake him. He will, you know, like in 1914 when he became king, is what oh. we believe also. Okay. So that, you know, when he ousted Satan out of heaven. And, you know, that's why the conditions are as the way they are now. Yeah. So we believe that God's kingdom will bring it into all of that. Right. That's what the short and kind of quick is about okay. what we really believe is that Jehovah God is who we worship his God, his son is Jesus Christ. As it says in the Bible of John 1 1. And then we preach about God's kingdom because God's kingdom is a message of peace, the message of the exact yeah. opposite of everything that we see happening yeah. today. Yeah. You know, God's kingdom, what he created in mankind and the earth, it's in the conditions it is now, you want to reverse, you want to see that reverse. Nobody want to live in bad conditions like the wars and oh, yeah. things like that. So that's why you see about God's kingdom now, because we're preaching that particular message. That's just one of the messages that we preach about. So what, how did you grow up in as far as religion? Yeah, well, um, I kind of grew up a little bit on the nominal religious oh, okay. side, yeah. like not really, just going through the motions and yeah. everything. And then kind of around the college age, I started to really take things more seriously and yeah. kind of look and find out what I believe, why I believe it. really started, yeah, just reading the Bible for myself and really yeah. trying to kind of figure out, you know, what is it? was it really teach i don't want to just believe something because my parents did right, right? you know yeah, they, want I to think, kind of make it your own exactly right? i think uh, <laughs> we have daughters and we taught them the same thing yeah make sure you read it for yourself and understand right it. right, and right. we'll help you and study with you and things like that but when you make and you read it for yourself and you understand the truth about it yeah then that's when it reaches your heart yeah. not when, when everybody else is saying on the gospel on the tv TVs and things like that. Yeah. But you have to make the truth your own. That we uh, keep believer in that also. Yeah. Are you from uh, this area? Uh, yeah, the general area. Oh, okay. I kind of moved here uh, about uh, about two years ago. Okay. Cool. It's a little newer to the area. Um, yeah, like so. When you say kind of your gospel message that Jesus became King and the world yeah. conditions are gonna, you know, one day improve. Um, there's a scripture that I, you know, that I kind of I memorized a long time ago that kind of. Um, shows me like what the gospel is it defines it um i don't know if you have a bible Andy. Yeah. i don't want to put you on the spot no, either right. so if you have a um, I, I, I'd, I'd like, bible right I, yeah i'd like to know kind of what you what you think um it's in first corinthians uh 15 yeah one and yeah it's the first uh first couple of verses um yeah and i have one handy too um what version of me are you using like king james or? i'm not honestly not really a fan of the the king james no, that's what i was asking yeah i appreciate you asking. don't use king james either yeah i i read one it's called the legacy standard bible okay. i don't know if you've uh heard no, of it um yeah but it says um I, it's okay if i read it or yeah, do you want to yeah it says now i make known to you brothers the gospel which i proclaimed as good news to you which also you received, and which also you stand, by which you also are saved. So this is about salvation, mm -hmm. right? If you'll fast the word which I proclaim to you as good news, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you as a first importance. So now he's saying this is the first important thing. What I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Right. And he was buried, and he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. So when someone asks me, like, you know, what do you think the gospel is? That's like the pretty succinct that's definition. He died, buried, and was right. resurrected. Right, and that's part of um, what we believe also there. And you know the Bible writer here was Paul. Right, right, right. Right, so Paul was the last of the apostles, right? The apostle Paul. Didn't John? John was a... So Paul, you think about the information that he was getting was based off of the apostles' information. Yeah. So, but anyway, you're correct. Christ died for our sins. That's where, and this is just a, a New World Translation. That's right. the version of the Bible that we use. So right. the word is a little differently, but it's just, I was able to follow along with yeah, what you yeah, were yeah. saying. Yeah, so it seemed so, like it, it said something pretty similar. Right. Yeah, because he says it's among the first things, or my Bible says the first importance. Right. And, and Christ because, died, buried, and rose from the dead too. 
Would you say that's your primary message too? Well, a part of our message is also that Christ died for our sins, right? Okay. That God gave his son, John 17, 3, so that we may have a chance at life forever, everlasting life. That's right. what the actual scripture says there. In, uh, in the sermon. I can never really see this. John 17, 3, sorry. So, this means everlasting life. Sorry, John 17. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. means everlasting life there. Coming to know you, the only true God and the one who sent Jesus Christ. Yeah. So it's, just, it's the same message, but Paul was talking about it from the perspective of 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. after Christ died. Yeah. And, but it's still saying that God sent his son so that we may have a chance. So that, that is what we base our faith on. Right. All right. Christ died for us. Yeah. So we believe that and we believe that God sent his son. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So when it, when it talks about, like, by which we are saved, what's, you, what's your understanding of, like, what, like, salvation is? You hear a lot of people probably talking about, you know, I'm saved or salvation. Like, what's your understanding of, like, what salvation is or how, how do I become saved in, in your view? Well, you have to, like you were saying, you have to understand the truth about what the scriptures are teaching. Right? Okay. You, you don't have, but we don't have salvation just because... Are, are we going to read in the Bible? Right. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to understand what God is saying. You have to understand that, you know, Jesus Christ's role in our lives, things like that, in order to get salvation. Salvation doesn't come just because we born. Right. It comes because of the relationship with God, understanding of what God has done for us. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so are you saying that just like right here, right now, if I... I mean, it's like, what must I do to be saved? Like, right. kind of that basic question. So, are you saying a, if I just believe the Bible and I just well, have I a relationship with God? Study, or, you have to okay. study and understand, not just so, so much believe. Because a lot of people believe, oh, yeah, the Bible is right. But if you yeah. really believe in some sort of true understanding of what God is teaching us, then you come to see, oh, and this is what He wants as far as this is how I gain my salvation, my life is everlasting. That's how, but you have to come to a true understanding of the scriptures. That's what we do. But not, but you wouldn't say a perfect understanding. Not a perfect, because right. we never can understand the right. mind of God. You know, we're still there, but that's why you study. Yeah. That's why you yeah. meditate. That's why you build that relationship. But God, in doing that, and once you become, you know, understand the truth, then that's where you start to build. Then you have that chance at salvation. Then you have that chance. Because we all have to work on it every day. Right, right, right. You know, you don't think that everybody out here that may be doing wrong and still know the Bible. Because they're, you know, then they say what they still want to be saved. Yeah. They always claim they want to be saved once they get in trouble. You know, things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, no, I, I gave my life over to Christ once I got to prison. You know, uh, so uh, yeah, it starts right, before right. that. If you start and understand and before that, then you would never take those steps and lead you around the wrong path. Yeah. You start on that path of salvation, that path of knowledge in God, the path of the truth. And that's where that's where we believe. So you could be like safe like right now, right? If you if you believe the it's, it's, Well you have a chance at being saved what it's a, it's a lot in that question that you were saying. Uh, I, I, so it's yeah, a can of worms, so. Yeah, it's a lot in that question, but you have a chance at at um, at salvation in the future right now our life will still live yeah but you have to prove that's why i say yeah right to prove in your life on a daily basis in order for you to, to gain that salvation you have a i think i think the question that you're asking is regarding the relationship with god when he sees you he reads your heart he wants to save all mankind mm -hmm. but he also you know there's a principle there's laws there think that well principles that he asks us to live by in order to gain salvation. But if you're living outside of those principles until you come to know that, you know, make a change, he still wants to save you, but he at the same time he said, you know my law, you know my principles. Yeah. But if you say you do it, then you still go out and rob somebody next door. How does that work with you? Yeah, you wouldn't really have believed it in the first place. It right. wouldn't be, it's like if I, um, you know, got married, I'm, I am married, but if I, you know, get married and then the next day I go she right. to my wife, it's like, well, do I really love her, you know? That's what that relationship yeah. with God is like. 
there's an imbalance. Because, like you said, and even for you just to know that, when you think about in Bible times, where they knew that same, or where David knew that same law, that he knew that same principle, but he still went and slept with that sheep. Sure, sure. And she was married. Yeah. But he still, but he, he turned his life around. Right. And gave God's favor again. But it wasn't because of him losing faith, but he was, wasn't living by those principles that he did at first. And he went through a lot because of that. You know, so there's a lot that we can, you know, converse about regarding that. But you're right, you have to have that salvation. You have to believe in that salvation rather gain a relationship with God in order to gain and keep that, that almost, I want to say, I don't want to say favor, but you want to keep that relationship with God. With God. Yeah. So it's all, I think we had a similar, but it's all about the direction, you know, how you gain and how you get to that understanding. It, yeah, it sounds like what you're saying, the obedience and everything, are, are you saying in a sense that you have to do enough good things to become saved? Is that what you're saying? Not really enough good things, but it's, it's about your life, it's about your lifestyle. Like, but it, are you, it sounds like you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that you do have to be good enough to, to become saved. Well, you know what? The thing is that understanding the scriptures from my perspective, yeah. from my organization's perspective, is we don't know, we can't read hearts. Right, you know right, that's the main right. thing. Yeah. But we also know in there by principle, by scripture yep. principle. So we don't know who God will say right. when it all comes down to it. But we know that by uh, living by the principles that He's laid out, then we have that relationship with God, a favorable relationship with Him. But it's not saying, oh, if I give somebody a million dollars because they were living, they were down, then God will see favor on me because what's in my heart. You know that everything only God can recall. So I might be here teaching you and reading, and you might be teaching something to me. But my heart condition is to love with God. Yeah. Really, because really say that. Because think about government. Government or people say <laughs> that's why we talk about God's kingdom. Because government officials say they're doing the right thing. They want to help the country. They want to give people this. But sometimes those in their leadership roles are the most important. But the, the way they're speaking, you all, you all we hear is the words. And what's really in their hearts, because if they really believe that, then would they do the other part of that? You know, so that's what it's, that's what we really, that's what it's all about regarding how to gain salvation, how to gain favor, how things like that is by living your life and also by your heart. Because I can live my life 100%. But in my heart, do I have ill will towards another race? Do I have ill will towards other people? You know, am I doing something behind my life? You know, all of that. Yeah. That's what God sees. So, yeah. It's about that. Yeah. Can I can I show you like one one scripture about what, it? It kind of has to do with like salvation and works. So I'd really like to know what you uh, what you think about in Ephesians two. And I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, so if you need to get back with me, I don't yeah, know. What so. I can do is I'll send you my card, <laughs> okay. and we can uh, talk about it. But if he's just too Yeah, uh, verse verse 8. By this undeserved kindness, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, rather it's God's gift. Right. And then verse 9. No, it is not a result of works, so that no one should have grounds for both of So... That's what we were saying. Yeah, so your 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 works don't factor into your salvation, right? Because because you could you could never do enough good things to earn it. Would you agree with that? Well, I would agree that you continue to work towards it. You know, you continue to work towards it. Like it says, your faith. You know, you're doing all this work just because that's what's on the outside. Yeah. That's what everybody sees. And that means either your faith is not there 100 percent or your heart condition or your what you truly believe is not showing you doing it for right? kind of like some of these um, ministers in these big churches yeah. you know I like was using one that in the left big church in the left he had what 10,000 
Yeah. Saying he's doing all these works. What did he say that what you just read or what did we just read? Did he have true faith? No, he didn't. He didn't demonstrate that he right. had yeah, it. It would be a, a false faith or, a not, or not, faith. not a real faith. Or he didn't to show that he wasn't going to start. Yeah. So, oh, God. God. doing these things to earn it or to try to prove you know, this is what we believe we yeah. think that if I teach you about this then it may it make you make, it may make you have a better life or it may make you not have so much anxiety or yeah. whatever the case may be we're not doing it just to say oh I'm, if I stand out here for four hours or I'm gonna get it I'm gonna go to hell right, right you know right, no, no right. that's right. totally not it yeah because think of my grandparents my great grandparents all of them Witnesses. And they did it just out of love for people, not love for God. Yeah. Not because they were promised anything. Right. No, we're not promised anything. Everything we do, we don't get paid to stand out here. Everything we do is on donation. Even our whole entire organization is, is on a work, is on donation basis. We don't get a check from anyone unless it's done. Right. So it's all about just volunteer work. That's yeah. actually what we call it. Anybody want to do volunteer work? Or we'll go out to different countries and just do volunteer work mm -hmm. on our own time. We don't get paid to do anything. Yeah. We use our own vacation time. We, you know, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's just out of love. Is it, is it part of your message that, like, if I want to be saved, I would have to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses? Is that the... I think it is. It's, we believe in you have to serve Jehovah God. We believe that's the only, the only truth. Right. So we don't want to go out there and serve a Buddha or anything sure, else sure. and use the same scriptures. We only serve the Lord God based off the Bible. We don't yeah. serve, because there's, there's no other gods, true gods mentioned in the Bible. You know, you say Jesus Christ as a son, we have a son. Jesus said he prayed to his father. That's what we based off of. So you have to come to that relationship of, you know, understanding of God. They had a chance to have life. But let me do this. Oh, yeah, yeah like that's, said, that's um, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sing you my car. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. For more information about Jehovah's Witnesses and other topics, please visit michaeljfelker.com. There you can also reach me directly to submit questions or comments to be covered on the JW Review. To subscribe to this podcast, please go to iTunes and search for The JW Review.